Hi everyone, welcome to Read a Book with Union Assurance. We all know that reading has many benefits. It helps us to expand our knowledge and also helps us to develop skills that may be useful in our professional and in our personal lives. But something a lot of us struggle with is finding the time to read. So Union Assurance has come up with the perfect solution for those of you who are keen to read but may be struggling to find the time. We will be reviewing a top-notch management book and presenting the key summary of the book to you so that you will be able to enjoy the takeaways and apply it to your life. It will be as good as you having read the book yourself. And that's not it. We will also be talking about the content of the book and reviewing it with renowned industry professionals so we understand how the book actually applies in the real world. The first book we will be reviewing is called Multipliers, How Best Leaders Make Everyone Smarter. This book is written by Liz Wiseman, who is a researcher and an executive advisor to leaders all across the globe. And to join our discussion today, we have Rohan Jayabira, who is a principal analytics delivery at Octave, a part of John Keyes Holdings. Rohan, welcome on the show. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. So Rohan, I've been told that yeah. you're an avid reader. Yeah. What inspired this passion to read and how did it actually shape the person you are today? I think when we are growing up, like obviously before the, you know, kind of giving away my age as well here, <laughs> before the social media and all that, we had a very restrictive way of kind of entertaining ourselves. And I think when we discovered books, it was really what was feeding our imagination. And was, for me, books had always been something that we could picture a bigger world as, as kind of a outside of what we were living. Sometimes it was an escape. Uh, and I think that's the way I picked up. I mean, my starting point would have been from Famous Five to Secret Seven to Clive Cussler to Tom Clancy all the way up to today, uh, reading all the management books and, you know, all the recommended stuff. So, yeah, long history. Uh, love the books at any given time. I'm Even now, I think I'm reading about three books at the same time. Uh, is that like a monthly take or you that's try to like, finish that? Yeah, I think it's about a monthly thing. That's one book I hate, but I have to read because it's text, because it's something that I have to do for my job. Uh, but I think one that's really interesting is that now how we consume books have differ, uh, differed. Like earlier it was always a physical book, now you actually have, uh, you know, I read books in one on a Kindle, one on an audio book and then, uh, you know, the old classic romantic way of having a physical book in your hand. So that's what happens. So let's start reviewing the book. The core premise of the book is that there are two kind of leaders around us. The first is called multipliers and the second is called diminishers. So the book says that multipliers are those leaders who use their intelligence and their capabilities to make everyone around them also smarter. While diminishers are leaders who use their intelligence and capabilities to drain the energy, that drain the motivation and the creativity of employees around them, making them not so much better. Rohan, have you met these kind of leaders in your journey when you've been working? So I think, uh, I think all of us when we have a kind of a journey you have I've been in the corporate and uh, in uh, organizations for about 25 plus years right and uh, what you see is that obviously you're not going to get the best leaders throughout your career they are always will be and I think in the book they talk about two types of uh, leaderships and I think uh, let me explain to you this way I think there's a saying that people don't leave organizations people leave their bosses right and I think I'm a firm believer and I think that is the same reason why you oftentimes when I have left organization that had happened I have met uh, leaders who have really brought me up to that level and I was very fortunate the first boss that I had in the first 10 years of my life uh, the few bosses I had in the first 10 years of my life were really inspirational and put me up there and I think that's why when I people ask me about ad advice about career I say the first 10 years it's not what you do that matters it's, it's the boss and the environment you're in uh, of course later on in my life I've had uh, not so great leaders but then you know one of the things is that it kind of helps you to mature up a bit more and understand people uh, when you have a bad boss, uh, but uh, I wouldn't, uh, the word I'm using is bad boss, but I'm really saying is the diminisher roles from the book. Um, and I think it's important to have that kind of a understanding what kind of individual that you are working with. And um, I think always you have to adopt. Um, I don't think you can change the, your manager or the leader or the boss of organization, but what you can really do is to adapt. If you can't adapt, then unfortunately you have to think about moving on to another role. Uh, but at the same time, there are people I've met who are great leaders. I had a, this particular example, I said, I had this incredible job offer. 
in my life and I told my boss that I got this job offer and I want to go and my boss said just wait and at that time he was in India and then next night, next morning he flew back to Sri Lanka, took me out for coffee. To cut a long story short, I stayed in the company. Right, so it's actually clear that in our journeys we will meet multipliers and the diminishers, so we can't really avoid them. Yeah. But the fact of the matter remains that these two kind of leaders do really have an impact on the employees yeah. and their company as a whole. Yes, and I think the, what you need to realize is that there's nothing good or bad, it's just the way you look at it or perceive it. When you have a bad boss also, you learn at least, if not the things you should do, at least the things you should not do. The book then goes on to review the five disciplines or characteristics typical to a multiplier and let's understand one by one. Liz Weisman says the first characteristic of a multiplier is that they are talent magnets. The book goes on to say that people flock to multipliers because they are understanding and confident of the fact that they'll be able to grow around multipliers. But in contrast, diminishers are people who view their intellect and their capacities as scarce resources. So people don't flock to them but rather scare away from them. Rohan, what is your view on the importance of being a talent magnet within the organization? Does it make a difference or are there instances where it's actually more beneficial for the management and the employees to have a good distinction between the two layers? You know, I think when we are growing up, the leadership is much more distinctive in terms of the differences you maintain. Right, the power difference, everything was very different. But I think if you look at what people really look for today uh, in terms of uh, careers, they want open communication, they want to uh, not have a rigid structures, they want flexibility, they want purpose, they want friendship and progress, uh, they want to uh, be, be, be able to work for a purpose. There's a lot of things like that. I think oftentimes the challenge you have, I think is the leadership wants to build a close relationship with their team but the team sometimes doesn't know that they also have to maintain a certain distance with the leadership so it's always this very uh, almost contradicting kind of a challenge i face as a usually a leader is that i want to be very close with my team and kind of get to them understand them and help them but at the same time when it comes to certain task and work the discipline commitment you know, uh, integrity are really important and if the team doesn't show that, then this entire relationship of wanting to be close suddenly now have to be a little bit distant. So it's a very interesting thing and I think it changes from person to person, but what it really has taught me is that if I have 15 members, I cannot segment them. I have to be in a hyper-personalization mode as an individual and speak to each individual as, the, as their own needs and wants and build that relationship. Some of them need distance, some of them don't. Um, so the short answer to that is um, your talent today as a leader is really being about how you can allocate time, spend time and be personalized to each individual in your team. The second characteristic is that multipliers create environments where it requires the best thinking of their employees. The book goes on to say that multipliers are people or leaders around us who create environments where employees feel safe to think out loud and get creative and novel in how they address problems and come up with solutions. But in contrast, diminishers have high expectations and they create a judgment and the fear of judgment in the environment, which is too intense for people to really perform their best and think out loud. Rohan, what is your experience with the importance of employees being able to think freely and come up with creative ideas? And especially in your careers, have there been situations where you shined because of your novel ideas or the ability to look at something different? So my observation I think in that is, it's really important that we create a uh, create an opportunity and a platform where people can express and be free. Nobody really feels comfortable over a long period of time if they feel very restricted. Uh, whether it's in their thought process or whether in the terms of their work and that's always a recipe for disaster in my mind. Uh, but at the same time, if I take a great example, like there was a, some time back, Google had this concept called 20% time. 20% time is where one day per week that is allocated for employees to do whatever they want. Now there were some great wins that Google got as a result. For example, Gmail emerged as a result of that 20% project. So that's collaboration, free thinking, imagination, all of that on that free time. But subsequently over a period of time, we know that that kind of a 20% allocation kind of went away because people maybe misused it or 
it didn't really kind of gave the return for the cost of the organization not having an employee for 20 percent of the time so there were a lot of checks and balances that came in ideas and projects have to be approved by the leadership and things like that so i think the way that i will call uh, this particular part of it is like more of a constrained uh, uh, controlled uh, part of it uh, you need to be controlled you need to be a little bit more constrained uh, it cannot be that I like this and this is the way it should be type of thing and when you certainly come into an environment uh, you know you have to be able to understand the limitations and the priorities of the organization you have to align that and within that uh, doing that doing all this creative collaboration work I think is the way that the company and the organization need to put. because you have to always understand that if the organization does not succeed it's no way that individual you can succeed as well so it's really important that put that as a priority and say that organization needs to succeed and how can i be creative within that constraints uh, so i think the the phrase i heard was creativity has its bounds and the third characteristic is that multipliers extend challenges Multipliers are viewed as people who challenge their employees constantly to contest what they already know and to find new knowledge. Whereas diminishers are people who tend to act like know-it-alls where they believe that their worldview is perfect and that it should be limited to what they know already. Rohan, what's your take on challenging employees to do better? Is it going to induce positive behavior from them or will it also eventually down the line create a situation where they're extremely stressed of the high expectations they must live up to? depends on a couple of things. One is, it depends on the industry you're in. There are most of the banking and financial industries, I think in my humble opinion, are rather slow moving, lacks innovation, uh, hierarchical. So they are, I don't know how much of a challenge you can do for new employees, and, or not new employees, any employee, but it is about maintaining a status quo and looking at incremental kind of growth. But there are organizations where I think, uh, what I would call is a more of a first principle thinking organization, which means, you have come into the industry and now you want to break and shake something and create your own little kind of a space and then there are the change, rapid changes there, then organize the people have to be able to adapt very, very fast. So it, first of all, it depends on the organization and the industry. Second of all, uh, there are two types of people. There are people who thrive under pressure and there are people who cracks under pressure. And I think that is a characteristic. Uh, I feel today not being thought well enough for the young people. Um, and the people who can absorb pressure and persevere are the ones who are likely to be great leaders and who are gonna contribute to organization for a, over a period of time. But the other people, obviously they need to be managed. Uh, they are more likely not gonna be the X factors. They are the ones who will do great operational routine work that is also needed for the organization but you shouldn't push them beyond that because that's just not their capability or they are limited by that and there's nothing wrong with that um, and i think it's important to support them uh, and continue that so i think again part of the leaders ability is to understand then i've seen that with very recently with a couple of the leaders they always have this one or two guys who are like jack of all trades they put them in this all these crazy projects that they have to do they are the ones who fly in fly out do all this stuff and which is like Ambiguity is very high, challenge is very high, variables are very high, but they are the ones who really handle that pressure and do it. And there's this bunch of people who will just join, come to work at eight o'clock, do the work very well, go off, but not challenge at all. So I think that's important uh, distinction to me. Industry and the people behavior. The balance is always important to make sure that yeah. you get the best out of each and every employee. Yeah. I, so just to add on, I don't think you should put everybody under pressure. I think you are doing disservice because not everyone is built the same. The fourth characteristic is that multipliers encourage debates. Multipliers act as debate makers, encourage the team to come to the decisions following a rigorous process of debating with each other to understand whether the path they are on is the best possible one. In contrast, diminishers act as people who take decisions in closed cycles and then pass the execution to the employees. But the problem with this is that because the employees do not understand the thought process, the buy-in may be lower. Rohan, is too much debate a pathway to create dysfunctional conflict in organizations? I think too much of anything is bad. I think uh, you should not, because organization, today the competitive advantage of an organization is the ability to execute, not strategy per se. Strategy is important, but your ability to execute is much more. 
you can't have debates about anything and somewhere down the line there has to be a tiebreaker there has to be someone i think that's why leadership is all about coming and making those critical decisions at critical junctures of of the of the decision making process for certain uh, you know important things um, so you should not actually uh, debate too much uh, you should allow a healthy debate at the beginning but after a while you just have to come on bring everyone together and say this is what we're going to do and just execute and the fifth and the last characteristic is that multipliers hold people accountable the book goes on to say that multipliers provide the required resources for their employees and holds them accountable for their own actions so this creates an environment where people have high expectations of themselves which they tend to deliver but in contrast diminishers are micromanagers where they take the full responsibility of bringing something to life and how important is accountability for employees and how can a good leader use accountability to push your employees to grow this is probably the most critical part of any uh, employment or any organization that i feel is seriously getting deteriorated and i think what is happening today is that a lot of people speak about you know this is the way i feel about things and this is the way it should be and all the but very few people speak about the uh, the individual uh, you know duty and responsibility and i think that also gets tied back into accountability and i think uh, we can't achieve anything unless people have accountability uh, in the work they do and the kind of way that they want to operate um, if you look at one of the very important things in a leadership is the ability to build trust a uh, trust is a two way thing you can't build it only because i tell you i trust you it has to be a process but when we trust people we have stay committed to what we agree on when we stay committed to what we agree on what we do is that we hold each other accountable for it and when we stay accountable for each other we deliver results so trust is a very important thing in somewhere in the middle comes accountability and without this middle step we cannot get the results we desire in the business and i think Uh, today a lot of generation i believe the lot of uh, today generation have been told a lot about individualistic thing but have spoken very little about duty and responsibility and i think it's very very important to have duty and responsibility and accountability to be spoken on the same breath that everything else like happiness and everything else. so what happens if you are faced with a diminisher in the workplace these wise men have provided strategies for this as well in the book and let me review the top 3 ones for you The first one is that it says not to jump at every interference. The book says that you can choose to reduce the interference of a diminisher onto your work and to your mind space by willfully ignoring some of the content and filtering what is most important to you so that you don't get disturbed too much by these interferences. And the second one is that you can look at exploiting the strengths and learning from your boss who may be a diminisher in this situation so that you can grasp what's best for you and helps you develop while also managing the situation skillfully and another way that someone can overcome this situation is by seeking to create connections outside the diminisher this goes on to say that when you have strong connections and you invest time in creating other connections you may be able to explore benefits and get to know more people and benefit from them as compared to being only limited to your diminisher rohan have you resorted into any of these strategies in your career when you had to deal with a diminisher or do you have any recommendations of your own as to how someone can deal with such situations so i think uh, when it comes to dealing with uh, diminishers one of the very important thing is that you as a leader set the tone for the organization and everybody needs to kind of align with that uh, if you have a diminisher in the organization it's really important that first of all if you can identify those kind of people and if you are above or you are in the peer level or even if you are below i think having a frank conversation and say these are the abc things that you kind of want them to get better at or improve but it has to come from not just the point of criticism but i always say that don't criticize unless you have a better solution or a better way that you cannot if you can't suggest a better way of doing that so that's really important and as a leader i think there are three four things one is you have to take responsibility of killing the uh, politics in the company then the you know diminishers will not last second one is about uh, making sure that you drive meritocracy that's really really important especially in this time and age where you appreciate people for their capability and skill set and competency of delivering something more than which school he came from for example right the third one i think um, as a as a leader what is really important is that you know you practice what you preach uh, as i said like uh, 
uh, if you want people to come on time, don't get late for meetings. Uh, you actually demonstrate the kind of uh, uh, thing that you want to uh, kind of uh, spread across your organization. I think that's the way to manage diminishes. The final sections of the book is actually what I think is most important. It outlines how you can become a multiplier yourself. While the author has outlined many strategies, we will review the top three for you. One of the first things you can do is that you can start assuming that people around you can do their job. When you assume positive intent and understand that people can find their own solutions, you actually allow them to think freely and hold them accountable. And this is one of the basic steps of becoming a multiplier yourself. And the second one is that you can run experiments on your own and seek feedback. This goes on to say that you can identify areas where you're a diminisher by mistake or by accident and take willful actions to overcome this situation. And by asking your colleagues and asking your subordinates whether the change has been positive, you will be able to reinforce this position. And the third one is that you have to always be able to withstand setbacks because this will not be a perfect process where you will be able to get results overnight and become an amazing leader overnight. Rohan, the final question for you today. How have you become a multiplier? What do you do to make sure that your employees are better around you? Thank you for the question. First of all, it's very hard to judge yourself and your performance through the lens because we all have a perceived notion about who we are, but the world sees sometimes differently. The way that I try to do it is, first of all, is that don't do things that you wouldn't want others to do to yourself, number one. Uh, second, I'll be very, very upfront, blunt, sincere about it. Don't have hidden agendas with your employees, uh, with your team members. Uh, it's all right that people don't like you because in this game of being a multiplier, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to like you and you have to be okay with it. Um, but as long as you have more wins than the losses, I think you're still doing a good job. Uh, more importantly, I think it's about accountability, integrity. Some of the things that we spoke earlier, I think are very important stuff we have to practice. And uh, more, very importantly, in this time and age, you have to be the one who are constantly getting better in terms of skill, competency, knowledge, and the current day practices. And that's a review of Multipliers on Read a Book with Union Assurance. We hope that you found the book review insightful and practically applicable to your lives. Rohan, thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. It's been really insightful and I'm sure our audience also found it to be the same. As we close this episode of Read a Book with Union Assurance, make sure to join us again on our next episode where we will be reviewing a top-notch management book just for you.